Right, this is the video for talking about my thoughts and opinions on passing my driving test. I've got my notepad, my A4 notepad with me here. I've got some notes and yeah, I'm ready to get into it. But before I do, I want to just give some context. I made the thumbnail this Tuesday, this Tuesday being the 24th of May, so day two since I've been off YouTube. I haven't touched YouTube at all and we're now day four into it, the 26th of May. The reason why I'm making these videos at this point in time is so that when I do come back, I not only have videos I will not only be making the Plank Journey Logs and the Road to Making Megabucks series again, but I'll also have more videos behind me to just upload over and over and over again to get the ball rolling. So that's what this is. So I didn't, I, I didn't actually expect to make videos before the end of the period, but here we are. Here we are, it seems like I really am not going to lose the consistency that I have. But when I do make these videos within this two week period, it's going to be for a reason with purpose, not because I'm trying to make videos every day. But on that note, let's get to it. I wanted to talk about a few different things. So we'll start off with number one my history with learning how to drive this dates back all the way to 2019 at the latest just before i was about to go into year 13 for a levels my first driving lesson that i had was on the 3rd of september 2019 and I had it with this guy. We we have we have our first lesson, right? We have our first lesson. I think it's two hours. We have our first lesson. He's just letting me know the extreme basics. And we go through it. I actually learn how to move off. I think it was a red course. I don't remember. But anyway, we do this and then... Things go tits up. Next lesson. This is the news. Oh no. Uh, you can't have a lesson with insert real name. Because he's retired. <laughs> this is where things started to go downhill. Because Corona hit. Corona hit. I I was in school, I was in year 13 after that and one of my friends at the time, he was learning with another driving instructor so from there I thought okay, you know what, there you go, I'll use this guy as, a, uh, as my driving instructor so my friend at the time gives me the card, He he does that and then I pick up I pick up the phone and then we get to talking. It was to him, the driving instructor at the time. He didn't know who I was. He, he thought it was a random number. So I explained how I got his number. And he's like, oh, so you know, insert real name. And then from there, sooner or later, we eventually went around driving. But I've just remembered, uh, there was actually a time before that. So, in, in terms of practical experience with driving. But even before that, there was the complications with the, with the provisional license. Very young and naive, I thought that I'd just be able to get the provisional license at 17 without having to pay for it. No. If I'm not mistaken, it costs 40 quid. It is not for free. The provisional license doesn't come for free. And I think during this these times, I certainly had a lot of hatred in me. And I blame my parents. 
for not letting me know that that was the case. Or, or something along the lines. I, I think I blame my dad. I don't know. But it certainly wasn't his fault. As a person who wanted to learn how to drive, it's my responsibility to make sure that I know I know what's going on and how I how I do certain things. For example, how to get the license. It was my responsibility that as me, someone that wanted to become a learning dri- learner driver at the time, it was my responsibility to go and find out what I needed to do in order to get that provisional license. It was my responsibility, not my parents' responsibility. But at the time, I don't think I really understood that. I think that could have been because I really depended on my mum and dad a lot more than I do now. For example, I, even though I'm living with them, I'm not depending on their food to not only survive but live. I'm not doing that anymore, but back then I was. I didn't know about healthy eating at all, not even in the slightest. Even now I'm starting to understand it, starting to understand it. But we'll keep on building and building and building and then eventually my eating habits will be where they want where I want them to be which is predominantly plant-based even though predominantly pescatarian is okay it's more than okay I say that because it's a lot uh, there's a lot less sodium in in fish rather than chicken and potentially other meats steak not really but if I'm not mistaken steak can increase the, the chances of you getting certain types of cancer I have to do more research on that for the sake of my own health and me as a person I have to do my own research on that but anyway yeah I think when I was I thought that I could get the provisional license for free boy I was wrong so in order to get this provisional license on one of my birthdays I think it was my 18th birthday my parents gave me the 40 pound to be able to pay for the license. It was either my parents or everyone in my family chipped in. But I don't really remember it. Eventually, after enough <laughs> naivety, if that's even a word, yeah, we eventually got it sorted out. And yeah, we got some practical experience. So I was learning. I passed my theory test for the first time now. I passed my theory test, but I had to, even though I passed it first time, I've had to pass it recently again because it went past the two year mark. So I had to go and do that. It doesn't even matter that I got more than decent scores. My. Oh. Yeah, it's not like. Is that I'm thinking, do I reveal test results? It's not like I'm like revealing any personal information or anything like that. I don't I think it's okay because it's not like I'm giving away my driving license number or anything like that, anything like extremely personal, so I think it's fine. My first theory test score was forty eight out of fifty for the theory and fifty six out of seventy five for the hazard perception. But when I took it the second time now, It was 48 out of 50 for the theory and 72 out of 75 for the hazard perception. I have no idea how my scores were that high. I practiced. Yeah, I practiced, but I didn't expect them to be that high. I was practicing before the test and I was getting like mid 50s, 60s and that. But I got 72 out of 75 my second time round. Before having my first driving lesson just before I was about to go into year 13 I was in my dad's car and he was allowing me to get used to looking at the pedals and feeling the wheel getting behind the driver's wheel and that it was a big deal for me back then because it was so different I had never been behind the driver's wheel before I was always in a passenger seat somewhere whether it be in the front or the back But yeah, for the first time, I was in the driver's seat, which was very different. I think this could have been 
uh, it was summer for sure, but it could have been summer 2018 or 2019. I don't really remember. But what I do remember is I remember reversing up and down the driveway. I remember reversing up and down the driveway. I'm getting used to getting used to doing that. Oh, for reasons that I'm not going to name, I said that I didn't want to go on the road even though he wanted me to. And he said something along the lines of very basically he shamed me for it. He said, Oh, I didn't know my son was like this or something like that. I don't really remember. But for certain reasons I'm not going to mention. I said no, I'm not going on the road. I don't I don't want to say why, I just don't although I can feel comfortable with saying it if I want to, I just think it's not comf I um I don't think it's worth it for reasons I'm not going to explain. Alright, so this is what happened beforehand and yeah man. To get the provisional license photos we had to take a picture, you have to take a passport style photo and in order to do this you have to have a straight you have to take a, a it with a straight face and I what I thought I was doing was a straight face I thought I was doing a straight face but I just had so much hatred in me that I couldn't not show it I couldn't not show it and it just looked like I was feeling really down and depressed and in the dumps because well I was I've just had a thought and I remember the exact date when I got the photo now. So the I I got the I got the I must have I must have got the license at seventeen even though I could have got it at sixteen because I now remember the exact date of when I got the provisional license and it wasn't when I was eighteen, it was before that. So yeah, I, I got the provisional license at seventeen. Later on in life, uh, around about half a year or so, I got my passport photos done and there was that same hatred showing. I looked young, uh, no, was it half a month? Maybe one and a half, well, one and a half years. I don't remember, but it was quite a while after I got my passport photos done and that same hatred showed. I looked a bit older, but the same hatred showed. Keep a, keep a straight face. There was just, I, I, again, I genuinely thought I was keeping a straight face, but there was just too much hatred in me for it to not show. And I was just so in that mode that I couldn't see it, that I, it genuinely, to me at the time, looked like I was keeping a straight face. But no, I was just, now that I look back and I'm no longer in that, that mental space, I had a lot of hatred in me and it showed. But now I've worked through a lot of all the trauma that I've experienced, at least as far as I'm aware anyway. I may not, have, I don't think I've at all completely worked through everything. I can think of one thing right now that I had to work through off camera yesterday. But I think I've worked through a large chunk of it and now I'm a completely different person. Even today, for the first time in how many years, I said I love you to my dad in how many years I don't know I was giving hugs before then but I said when I was ready I would and I now have I've now said I love you to my dad after how many years and you may think that that's irrelevant but it actually is relevant to driving because my dad can drive and I've driven with him in in the past now there's no way we'd be able to drive healthily and he'd be able to give me advice in a constructive way which I'd be willing to receive if I had as much hatred for him as I once did. One thing I've also noticed is that back during these times on the premise that I was having was speaking to them during serious conversations I'd be very quick to respond basically instant and yesterday on the 25th, I bought parenting courses. Yes, I bought parenting courses. And within one of the courses, they spoke about them, uh, there being a 
reactive and non-reactive a reactive and a non-reactive environment and i think me being so quick to respond added to the reactivity of the environment so i must take accountability and understand that yeah my parents may have been that same way but so was i because i didn't know any better not until not until yesterday i didn't even think of reactive or non-reactive environments but tell me this which which 20 year old is paying for parenting courses when they don't have a child i don't have a kid i don't have a kid and i haven't had sex the sexual status is still virgin but it, it doesn't matter to me i shouldn't have to get to the point where i'm having thoughts of wanting to be a dad and wanting to have kids before i think ah shit i've been wanting to take parenting courses ever since i was 20 years old but i just didn't act on it i don't have to think that way i don't have to think that way because i've acted on it i have bought those parenting courses and i've been on it i have been watching last night when i paid for the course i've i was watching I haven't watched today i mean i've been doing stuff writing down thoughts what else wrote down some gratitude i read a bit i was reading transform your body transform your life transform your life by akash Vakela. i think that's how you pronounce his surname i'm genuinely i'm not trying to mispronounce it if if i am so if i am i apologize for that and i've decided that i should uh not should that it was necessary for me to read past what i'd read because I was just done reading the start over and over and over again. That could have sent a subliminal message to my mind that I was just forever just stuck at the start. But I'm done with that. I'm going to carry on reading from where I've left off. I read seven pages like that. It was very easy. There was once a time when I was just looking at, the, I, I spoke about it, there was once a time when I was just looking at the pages and was like, that's what my brain was doing, that, that, that's what my brain was doing and it just could not comprehend reading because my mind, in, in, in my opinion, I think that really could have been, been because my mind was so overstimulated from watching YouTube. That's no longer the case because I've taken these these two weeks off and we're only four days in. Today today is day four, by the way. Yeah, it's, it's going well. I like the progress I've made. That's why I'd say it's going well. I really believe it's going well because I'm no longer thinking about total view count or any formal analytics that the planking journey has to it views that was my stomach there by the way views new viewers returning viewers subscriber count impressions none of that i'm not thinking about that anymore without prompt and i'm now in a much more healthy mindset i now have a much more healthy mindset because of that i'm now actually Achieving what I want to achieve off camera because I've given myself the time to really be able to not figure out what I want to do. I've done that. I know that I want to become a PT and I know I want to get my money up. I want to get the basics down. My own place that I'm renting, that's a, a spacious two bedroom apartment. So that I have a space to rest my head that's large and spacious and I really enjoy it. I may have a view as well and I also have a, a small office that I can pay for comfortably. And then I have so much money um, that I'm just growing and growing and growing through all of my actions that I'm, I'm taking right now. And that I've, been uh, that I've been taking for the past few days off camera. Yeah, it's, it's really coming together and there's no way... This would have been able to happen if I didn't take this two, these two weeks off. I think every single month, 
is set in stone that I'll take the first seven days of the month off to be able to recover and rest. But if I really need to reset, in my opinion, I'll take two weeks off. I take two weeks off because I know it works. Even though it's day four, I really believe my pinky wasn't in that in that frame. Even though it's day four, I really believe that this. If I need a major reset, like how I believed I I needed, then I'm taking two weeks off. These week these times I'd be taking off are times that I'd use to be able to sharpen my sword. And also. On Sundays, I'm doing much less than I usually would, so that I'm not on. I'm on the internet minimally to be able to further um, establish healthy boundaries between not only me and my um, my phone, but also YouTube. It's not healthy looking at view count or analytic uh, any any form of analytics and comparing myself to others. That's what I do. I'd compare the total view count of the Planking Journey channel to Luke Spurgeon's view count and last time I checked it was 4,656. I'd see this and then I'd look at Luke Spurgeon's channel's view count just go up and up and up exponentially from 30,000 to just going, just going faster and faster and faster and then bang out of nowhere 36 or the 30, uh, 36 or the 37 and then 42,000 views in total in total meaning over every single video that he's posted and that he has up on the channel I compare myself to him and his channel I would um, what any other channels other smaller creators like Chris Rabbi I think his name is I do this I did this with Hamza's channel once as well but that was more so to get like a, 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 a screenshot that I could put on the, on, on the lock screen and then as a manifestation really but then in the end I didn't use his one I used PewDiePie's one I took a screenshot of PewDiePie's total bio and then looked at the total view count and then I edited it so it didn't have PewDiePie's name on it it had this channel's name on it and took off the United States and then uh, edited Kingdom on it to, f to make it further real to trick my mind in a sense maybe to make it see make it see the total views as 26 billion yeah, yeah, I think it's, if I'm not mistaken, it's PewDiePie's total view count is 26 billion. Billion. But I originally took it off. It was just very unhealthy to be thinking about, um, to be defining my worth and how valuable I am as a person or as a man by a list of numbers that I can't control. View count, likes, dislikes, comments. I can't control all of these things. I think one thing I've even noticed that you may have noticed too is that the way how I'm speaking right now is just generally a lot calmer in this video compared to other videos I've made in the past. And I'm also pausing a lot more after each sentence I've noticed myself doing that throughout this video um, another thing I've also noticed was my teeth are very natural I didn't have braces and I was looking at the gap in my front teeth not very early on but maybe like yeah, by the 10 minute mark or something yep imagine that I I've never had braces and this is the end result that I got pretty solid to be honest but i really i i need to go to the dentist not for braces but just to make sure that i do what it takes to be okay
because I've noticed that my gums were bleeding. Maybe it wasn't little, right here, my gums would bleed. Around, around about there. And yeah, I know I need to go to the dentist. With most life situations, I want to be able to figure them out myself and do what I need to do by myself. But this, this right here, this is something that I don't want to figure out. This is something that I don't want to solve by myself. I want to have a fully qualified dentist to be able to let me know what's going on and how to solve it. I don't, I don't want to go on the internet and put myself in a position where I'm breeding agoraphobia, I think it is. Health anxiety. I think I've used the right word, agoraphobia. Um, I'm not sure. But yeah, I'm just not doing that to myself. But I'm, I'm waiting. I'm not doing it quite yet. Because I'd, I'd rather have money coming in before doing it. Even if it's one source of income, I'd rather have money coming in. Money's not coming in. But I am really working towards it. I've been making plans and I've been following them. Love Dorsey's advice of setting deadlines and dates really helps. And working towards the same things every single day over and over and over and over again. For me, that's getting the basics down. I'll actually say, yeah, I'll show you what um, what they are. This is what I'm working on every day. Every day. NS, by the way, here. That means natural stimulation. But, um, yeah, I've been working on it. I've been working on it, on that same thing every single day. And I'm going to even past the two week period just to make sure that I've got the basics down I've set goals, I've set aims and I have deadlines to achieve them and sooner or later things are going to be in very 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 full swing where I'm not only achieving deadlines but they're solid and in place love Dorsey's advice of setting deadlines I can vouch for because it's helped me get to the place where I am today and where I am on the way to being in a half a year, few months, half a year, one year, two, five, ten, twenty years time and so on. Oh. Yeah. But anyway, we got to get back to the driving. So... Mm. Yeah. Right. Now we've spoken about um, my history with learning how to drive for the most part, all the way up until my uh, current driving instructor. As I was getting used to the area, I I found my driving instructor on the road. He had his advertising on the car and. Without it, I wouldn't have known that he was a driving instructor. I saw him, and then we got to talk in, in person. Yeah, I, I met my driving instructor in person rather than over the phone. It was very convenient that opportunity was there. The opportunity was there, and I took it. I took the opportunity, and now we're in a place where I genuinely could be passing my test when I plan to. I think I absolutely will. I want to pass my test with two minors, specifically two minors, not too many or too few. I don't want zero minors because I am not perfect. I am not perfect, hence I don't want zero minors, but I want two specifically to show that although I'm not perfect, my driving is very solid and that I really am taking becoming the best, the, the, the safest driver that I can be, seriously. So that's, that's why I want two minors. I don't mind one though, one's, one's fine, but the number that I have in my mind is two. I was looking at this big spot here on the razor bumps. 
I've shaved, I purposefully shaved lightly. And we'll see how they progress. I think they'll get lighter and lighter. They'll eventually go away. Mm. But this is where they are now. And then under the neck, directly under. It would help if there was lighting here. That would help. But this is the best that I'm going to provide now. Hold on. Hold on. Um, uh, oh, God. There you go. Alright. <sighs> so, let's talk about how long it's been since I've been yeah, learning how to drive with my current instructor. Oh. It's been over a year now. It's been getting on to. Getting on to 14 months, it's been very rocky. Uh, as I was starting with him again, um, I hadn't been with him two times, but I was starting learning how to drive for a fourth time, for the fourth time. The first time was the first guy that I had one session with, and then the second time was back when I was in A-levels. The third time was in uni. The fourth time I was going to get back with the second instructor. But I saw this first guy here. And I didn't like the guy's personality as much as I once used to. So I just, I went with the the uh, instructor that I saw and met in person. And he's he's been great. He, he really has. I've been learning with him. Uh, I used to learn with him. Especially when I was starting off, once a week, that's consistent enough for, that was consistent enough for me to learn how to drive and actually make progress in learning how to drive without needing to learn how to drive in my dad's car. I really didn't want to learn how to drive in my, uh, my dad because of that hatred and also because I just didn't want, I didn't want him I just didn't want the conflict. I didn't want I didn't want my dad shouting at me behind the wheel in high pressure situations. Um but now if that does happen, I know that I can set boundaries and I know that he's not doing it out of a place of hatred for, to try and belittle me or make me feel inferior to him. It's because to him it really could be a high pressure a high pressure situation because behind the wheel we can die we absolutely can die at any moment but it gets very serious when driving a lot more serious than if you're just for example laying on the bed even though in both situations laying on the bed and being in a car we can die at any moment but there is that pressure there where you, where you could crash and it could be fatal but i didn't i didn't really think that i, I just wasn't in a mind space to receive it it being have lessons with my dad I wasn't in a mind space to be able to understand that he was if he does do that it's only out of support not hatred and I no longer have as much at least as much hatred as I once did so I'm now willing I'm not no I'm now in a place where I can accept ex yeah accept their support and their love and it just seems like a part of that is shouting but I, again I now know at my age I can set boundaries. I now know I can set boundaries. If my dad's talking to me in a certain way I don't like, 
I can respectfully let him know. It's not a matter of me feeling inferior to him or anything like that. The way how I feel inferior to him is because of the fact that he could hold it against me in the future by saying, oh, well, I was the one that uh, taught you how to drive because he's held things, regardless of how minor, he's held things against me in the past, regardless of how minor, but I'd only remember those parts, really. I wouldn't remember the parts where he was telling me, I love you, or all the times when he wanted to do things with me, but I said no, because I wasn't in a space where I could, you know, where I was willing to accept his love and support. Yeah, I've broken the streak. I've now said I love you to my dad in how many years? I don't know, man. Maybe, maybe at least five. At least five years. That is a bare minimum. Bare minimum. But yeah, the, the, the streak is broken now and will be replaced with me saying I love you to my dad and... I love you to my mum, I haven't yet said it to my mum in a while, but it's been a much shorter while compared to the last time I said I love you to my dad. I love the both of them and I love my family. And I am now mentally ready to carry on taking their love and support and using it in a way that benefits me and allows me to further live my life on my own terms rather than shy away from it because I think that their support and their love would would hinder me, hinder me from doing that. The only way I hinder myself from actually being able to progress is by speaking too much on the moves I'm making in order to improve myself. But I now understand that, but in the past I didn't. So I thought their love and support was just hindering me. I just wasn't really doing right by myself as much as I, I am now either. But um, yeah, yeah. Anyway, um, for a long while with the driving, I was learning once a week, many months, and we made solid progress. I'd actually go on Google Docs and record all of the, 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 the stars and the topics or from the uh, app, that we, from the driving app that we'd use. We being me, my instructor, of course. And yeah, I was making progress on that, but I'm not looking at that anymore. We know that the test is coming up soon and I'm, ca I'm going to carry on doing what I'm doing with the plans that I've set myself and driving with my dad. I'm not going to say when, but it's coming in August. It's coming in August and yeah, I'm on the way to passing with two minors. I want two minors. If not one, I want either two minors or one minor. I don't want anything that's that's less or more than than either two or one. I want to I want to be able to have amazing driving skills, but I am not perfect. You know these faults; they are subjective. One person may think something's a minor. One person may think that something isn't a minor. So how many faults I get is subjective and it's not something that I can control or I'm going to try and make myself think I can control I just want to do that I'm not going to try and do that to myself and then I stress out during the exam speaking of that's actually another thing I want to talk about I'll be going into the exam with the motives of becoming the best driver no not the best sorry the safest driver the most aware driver that I can be I'm certainly not planning to drive in an over-cautious way. I'm certainly not planning to overdo it. And, yeah, I just, I want to be a driver, and I'm on the way to being a driver. But, um, yeah, I don't want the, I don't want zero faults. Or three faults plus, three faults or more, I don't want that either. For me, that's just too many. 
because I've focused my mind on having two two minors, and that's it. That's the only number that I had in my mind. That's why three, three or more is just simply just too many. In my opinion. Um, what else? I'm now taking lessons once every two weeks. As I learn with my dad and then, yeah, I'll be fine. I've got deadline, like, get very comfortable with dual carriageways and uh, being on the motorway and go to certain places here and there. By the 1st of July and then by the 15th, my theory is up to scratch and I know how to do, I know I know how to do all of the manoeuvres. So for then I have enough time to be able to just reinforce all of these things before I take the test. But again, I'm going to go into the test with the motives of being the safest driver that I can be. Or maybe just driving like it's a, an, an, just driving like it's another day, really. It's just a test. It's literally just a test. It's not anything to really make a big deal out of. I've booked it. I'm not postponing it because postponing it will... Not only mean that I spend more money on it. That's not the reason. That's not the reason why I'm postponing. Uh, that's not the reason why I'm not postponing it, though. The reason why I'm not postponing it is because I need to pass the test sooner or later, and I plan for it to happen this year. So it needs to happen this year. So that's what I'm gonna do. Oh, sorry. On the way to doing. That's what I'm on the way to doing. And then when I pass my driving test, I'll show the thing the certificate and i'll blur out most details but i'll show enough for all of you to know that i've passed my test and that if you want to do certain things like this you can too on the premise that you work on it every day and that you have something to show for every day just like how i am I've spoke about everything that I really want to sp speak about, really, uh, other than to say that once I pass my practical driving test, I will be taking more courses like the Pass Plus and the advanced driving courses out there because I'm, re I'm taking the motives of wanting to be the safest and the most aware driver that I can be seriously. I'm taking it seriously and hence I'll take the Pass Plus. Not, not for insurance reasons, to lower down insurance and that, no. If that happens, it's, it's, that's a side bonus. But to be the safest driver that I could be and to gain more experience, I'd take the Pass Plus course, especially because that would mean I'd be going on the motorway and get more experience with that. Because I've only been on the motorway once with my driving instructor. So I'd do that and then I'd do the advanced driving course as well. In the car that... Alexandra Power has given me, may she rest in peace. If there is a God out there, may, may the deity or deities bless our soul. I certainly plan to go and look back at religion and decide what sort of religious beliefs or lack thereof I want to have. But I'll be doing that on my own terms, I think. I'll do that once I've moved out. During like, mm, that's an idea, there you go. During like have two weeks off, have another two weeks off to really just get it together and start making my own opinions on religions and lack thereof to be, to decide. Okay, I want to have these sets of beliefs for whatever reason. Yeah, I've spoken about my plans to pass the test even before I looked at it on the paper. I've spoken about everything that I want to speak about, so this is it. Hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something valuable, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. We're going to have many videos. We may genuinely have quite a few videos coming out. We've got the driving test one here, and then we've got the... What I've managed to do in the transitioning phase that I plan to create. I've started making notes on what I've achieved on each day, and I started from day one. On the 23rd of May, on the Monday. But uh, I'll make a video tying everything together. 
I may not explain every single thing that I've achieved, but um, I'll, I'll explain the main things and things that are worth explaining. But for now, that's it. Now, the part two to this video will be me. As you know, there'll probably be three or three or four parts. This one here, after I've passed my test, after I've started taking the courses, passed uh, after the practical driving test and after the point I've done that and my thoughts on that. So yeah, that's it. That's it for now. I'll see you in terms of this um, this topic. I'll see you when I've passed my test. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something valuable. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Every day is the answer. Do what you need to do to transform your life, lads and lasses. Even if that means taking a two week off, two week break off like me. Sometimes it's needed and I want to be taking the first seven days of every month off from now on to be able to reset. And regardless of which day that lands on, it doesn't matter to me. Regardless of which day of the week it lands on, it doesn't matter to me. I'll take the first seven days off to be able to have that healthy boundary set between me and how often I go on YouTube and uh, how often I create videos and the re how I use my phone or the relationship that I have with my phone. I stuttered when I said that because I thought of Greg Doucette's comment of him saying you don't have a relationship with food, you have a relationship with people. But that's his opinion, not mine. I'd, I'd have to develop my thoughts on that by getting a dictionary definition as to what relationship means. Because it's not necessarily a thing where you it's only with people, but that's for another day. If there's anything that you want to work on, work on it every day, man. Every day, or at least work towards it. Work towards it, make plans and follow, act on those plans. Instead of just wanting to, instead of just wanting to do them, actually do them. And the way how I've done this, for me personally, at this point in time, is take the two weeks off, take the two weeks off, set plans as to what I want to do, have um, a f uh, only a few things as to what I want to uh, what I want to work on every single day, and I've set in those plans I've set deadlines, which I'm following, which which I'm following. So those will be my tips as to doing what you set yourself every, uh, every day, work on it every day, even if that means you take a two week break off having something to show for it, like how I have now. I've scheduled videos to play, to say, oh, I'm going through a transitioning phase, but I mean, making videos like this where I'm actually talking about progressing and actually working towards it. And I've driven on the dual carriageway with my dad today, and I've been in an area, I've been in this area that I've been in many times in the past, and yeah, I I felt okay going to this area. Before in the past, I didn't because I had to get over going on the dual carriageway with my dad to get there. But after doing it and getting over that hump, no pun intended, I'm okay now. I'm okay now, and yeah, you will see another video with the uh, papers saying that I've passed my test, and then you'll see. The video coming out when I've got Pass Plus courses and the uh, um, advanced driving courses and when I've passed those as well. But for now, that's it. Every single day is the answer, man. Every day. But anyway, hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something valuable. And I'll see you all in the next one. Peace. I love you all. Love you all.